This man is a bona fide AFL champion. He is the reigning Brownlow medal winner, which is the highest award in the sport. He's an avid Swiss ambassador. He's a mental health advocate. And recently, he has taken on his biggest role, fatherhood. Every interview with a shot. Is it? Or is it just now? <laughs> it's just now. This is not your average shot. This is actually apple cider vinegar mixed with a bit of fire water, I think. Purely healthy. It's what they use in NASA. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah, like something that. that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now we can begin. That's terrible. <laughs> I feel cleansed. It's totally cleansing. <laughs> Your sinuses, oh, your yeah. throat, your... Yep, your everything. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll calm down and just think about what we're going to talk about here. Um, All right. Mox Creek. <laughs> can you concentrate with that? <laughs> yeah, I can slightly. <laughs> this place, Mox Creek, I can see why you came back. Now, yeah. fishing at your doorstep, surfing at your doorstep, it's literally across the road. What do you yeah, love it's... about it? Well, I think um, for me, the, the entire surf coast, and we're in areas now, and um, it's just home. Mm. I, I, um, I drive on the way back from Geelong after training, and as soon as I see that ocean, it's like, yeah, it is. It's like a big, a big deep breath. It is, honestly. It's yeah. like a, a deep breath for your soul, and then all of a sudden, as, as sappy as that sounds, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. So, when you, you moved back from Adelaide, was that a big decision, or was it purely that calling of. I just want to be close to the water, close to mum, dad, close to nature. It was, it was all those things. It was, um, I love my time in Adelaide. I spent eight years there. Um, but I suppose for the, for Marty and I, we were ready for the next phase of life, and it was, you know, starting our own family, which we've done now, and it was getting something more than just footy out of life, and that's sort of what Adelaide was. It was really, um, it was a wonderful place to live, but so footy focused. Whereas the surf coast, is, as you said. Family are close by for both of us. Mm -hmm. The surf, the fishing, um, it's a pretty special place. Do you feel like now you've got the balance right? Like you, you love your footy, but you've, you're just 15 minutes down the road from all this tranquility. Yeah, I think you're right. I think um, that balance is crucial to any sort of elite performance, I think. Mm. And to be able to have that now, to be able to relax and enjoy footy when I'm in Geelong and I'm in Melbourne and, and, and playing, um, compared to, you know, driving down the highway a half an hour and all of a sudden it's where we go. Yeah. So you've just entered a new phase of life. We've got a new beautiful baby boy, George. What was it like when you first held him in your arms? Uh, well, when people talk about love at first sight, I never quite understood it. But when George was born, it was like all of a sudden nothing else in the world mattered. And if you needed to give your life away, then you'd do it in a, in a heartbeat. And, it was a pretty special night. It's been a you know a wonderful uh, few weeks and months, and yeah, it's it's amazing. Yep. And were you there? Were you a good support team for Marty in the thick of it all? Yeah, I was there. I was on the uh, half forward flank. I wasn't <laughs> quite you know right there, but um, that was you certainly have a great appreciation for what our lovely ladies go through and. Good. Um, Really, we are weak as blokes at times, I think. Uh, did, you, did you hear that? <laughs> it's so true, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I wish my husband would think like you. <laughs> uh, I, I totally get it now. There's nothing that we could ever go through that would come anywhere no. near as close. Just, oh, I still can remember. <laughs> I'm just thinking, somebody shoot me. Has anyone lived through this pain? <laughs> oh, it's, yep, we were a few hours in there, and then it was, uh, give me the apple jewel. Yes. <laughs> that straight up. Um, so what do you, what, how do you see your life unfolding now with little baby George and, and being down here on, in Logs Creek? Well, all of a sudden, as soon as training finishes, I can't wait to get back in the car and, and get home and see him. So, um, you know, fishing and surfing, which I love doing, it sort of pales into insignificance compared to coming home and seeing him and uh, seeing him smile and doing nappies and making sure that uh, he's covered while you're doing the nappies because, you know, and they start peeing when you're changing nappies. It <laughs> just goes everywhere. <laughs> yep, several the times. Has it hit you, though? <laughs> uh, no, it's hit me. Yeah, it's hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that would have been good to get on camera. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Mark's like, I told you, I told you. Yeah, boys just have a mind of their own, don't they? Um, 
Now, in terms of footy, like to play at your level, you're obviously a gifted athlete to start with, but how much do you think it is mindset? Have you always had a, a I guess, a really optimistic self-talk going on? In yeah, life? I have. I think, um, I think every a AFL list has talented players. It's just maximising the talent that you've got. And majority of the time, that's done between the years. Yep. And that's the challenge every footballer faces, facing that battle of consistency. Mm. Because you're never drafted on something that you're not good at, you're drafted on what you're good at. And it's about maximising you know, those strengths. And the best players in the competition are able to do that and do it consistently. And, um, it's, it's still a challenge. You still go through form dips and um, troughs and all that sort of thing. But um, the challenge is to, to do it consistently. And I find for me, if you have a, something outside of just footy, so it's not just a total narrow focus, then it makes your time when you are at the club um, easy to focus. Mm. Now, I imagine the level of pressure when you're playing at that level is just out of control. And you would have to have an outlet to, to um, escape from that in, in your mind, I suppose. And I guess there's a lot more players coming out and talking about their mental health. How did you have you been on a bit of a roller coaster with that yourself over time? Oh, no doubt. And I don't think there's, forget footy, I don't think in it, anyone, I don't think there's been a person that hasn't at some stage experienced, um, you know, that feeling of melancholy or, or disappointment or, or uh, uncertainty. And as an elite sportsman, you face that often. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to find someone, for one, to talk to and to. Um, you know, discuss these things with rather than just totally bottle it up because yes. at some point it reaches the tipping point and sort of happened four or five years into my career where it all just got too much so mm. you need to find that person to be able to have those conversations with and um, Did you, you know, just vent your spleen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been, we're very lucky as AFL players that um, the contacts that we have through the AFL PA and you can visit sports sites which I've found so valuable because when I was living in Adelaide as a really young player, I wanted mum and dad to be mum and dad. Like, yeah. I wanted that to be their job. I wanted yes. my teammates to be my teammates and coaches to be coaches. So actually employing the services and going to see someone separate to that, I found so beneficial. Yes. So did you find the pressure itself was turning into more like a perfectionistic fear of yeah. failure? Yeah, and that's the industry. The industry is about... Um, perfection and, and wins and losses. At the end of the day, you're judged on whether your team is up or, or down. A lot of the time when you win, it can cover plenty of cracks, but when you lose, everything comes under the microscope. Uh, excuse me, and it just, it's so consuming. And I suppose the general public feel like they can tell you about those losses to your face. Oh, and they do, and you know, but that's, that's part, of the, part of the game, that's part of the sport, because um, we've got to understand, I've got to understand that for a lot of people, footy is actually their escape. Mm. And yes. that's what takes their mind off work. And yeah. they live it through the performances of the team. So when the team's not going well, mm. all of a sudden what their escape was isn't enjoyable yeah. at all. So uh, it's, there's so many different ways to look at it while, while you put under pressure, but it shows everyone. Yeah. With that in mind, what, what would you say to other young people that might be feeling a little bit like they're on their own and they're struggling and they, they don't know what to do and they're a bit embarrassed to talk? What would your suggestion be? Put your hand up, I think. I think um, society is uh, far more accepting now of people putting their hand up and saying, you know what, I'm not travelling super well, I need a little bit of help. Um, we've come a long way. We're, we're lucky to live in the community that we do now because people get it. They get the fact that uh, we all go through uh, different emotions at different stages, so you've got to be able to put your hand up and say, I'm struggling a bit, and I think people are accepting of that. And I think you're exactly right. Every single person you know, whether they admit it or not, will go through or has gone through something. And that if we could all be that little bit more open, no one would feel like they needed to hide it. Well, I think in, in, AFL, in the AFL industry, people talk about courage, running back with the flight of the ball or putting um, yourself in harm's way. Courage, I think, is people standing up and, and saying that they've got a few issues and they need to take a step back at different stages. And we've seen that over the past 12 months with quite a few footballs. And I look at that and go, you know, that's, that's true courage. It absolutely is. And I guess we all look at you footballers and you look super strong and fit and healthy and people on the surface would think, hey, they can't have any problems. Yeah, and I think um, with how influential sports people are within the community, we have a responsibility to, to make sure that these issues are raised and 
We're as human as anyone else, that's for sure. Absolutely. Now, so what, what would you say your definition of your happy place would be? Uh, well, my happy place is, it's, it's Mogs, it always has been, even more so now that uh, George has been born. But I think um, it's doing things that give me mental clarity. And that's always sort of been fishing and surfing because when I'm doing those things, I'm not focusing on anything else. Mm. Your, mind, your mind doesn't wander on, you know, uh, football or things that you've got to do, mm. appearances that you've got to go to. It's just a clarity of I'm trying to catch this fish yep. or I'm trying to catch this wave. It's just... It's almost it's like zen. a meditation, isn't it? It honestly is, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was going to ask, so if, if you could take three people fishing... They could be living or dead. Three people that inspire you, who would they be? Well, I take him every time I go fishing just about. That's my dad, John Boy. Uh, John I Boy. <laughs> He's a bit of a legend, isn't he, John he is. Boy? Um, so it would definitely be him. If I was ever, I think, stranded on an island, I'd only need John Boy, and he could basically fix everything. He'd build houses, he'd find water, he'd find food. Is that food, right? He's so... a bit like MacGyver, is he? Yeah, he's <laughs> like uh, your modern-day um, David Attenborough. So oh. maybe it'd be John Boy, David Attenborough. Uh, and I love... Um, new movies, so maybe Jim Carrey. <laughs> we all provide the laughs. Come on, come on, give us a little bit of a. I know you're good at uh, oh, imitating him. I'm not very him. good at, uh, but um, but if I walked out of the room, I'd probably say to you, if I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> just wait longer. <laughs> just wait longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. So you're multi-talented. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I have just heard you sing. I'm not going to make you sing on the spot, but I have heard you sing a bit of carpool karaoke. <laughs> well, talk about like mental clarity, and I, we drive an hour and a half to every game because if it's um, if it's long, it's lucky it's sort of fifty minutes. If it's MCG, it's at least an hour and a half. It's a long time in the car to get uh, too focused on footy and start worrying about that. So it's going to work in well with George. It's just uh, a bit of Disney on the radio, and away oh, you go. You get used to those Disney movies. Oh, Frozen! They are I'm the very good best. at singing it. <laughs> Um, now tell me, what was that? I had something I was going to ask you. What was that? Um, okay, so if you could be famous for something other than football, what would it be? Uh, if I could be famous for something other than footy, it'd probably be surfing. I think professional surfers have some of the greatest lifestyles. You think about, you know, what people do to take themselves out of um, their everyday life. A lot of people go and surf. They do that for a living. Can you believe this it? Is, how good would that be? Some people probably think that about football. Who oh, knows? They do. But um, unfortunately, there's a lot of media scrutiny. Mind you, the same, the same, same thing would be for surfers yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. I thought you might have said uh, performing or a bit of theatre or something. but uh, <laughs> No, because I've, I've had a little bit of experience behind or in front of the camera. It takes a long time to do things. <laughs> it does. It can be quite boring. <laughs> Imagine yourself standing at George's 21st. What would you like him to say about his dad? Well, I'd like to embarrass him first. I think that's just part and parcel 20, 21st. You've Absolutely. got to make sure you get that uh, out of the way. Um, I would love to have the sort of relationship with my son that I have with my father. It's not really a father-son relationship. It's more of a a mate's relationship. With you don't call him dad, do you? You call him John Boy. I call him John Boy. <laughs> Everyone calls him John Boy, but um, we are tight. We do, you know, so much together. Um, I'd love to have that sort of relationship with him. I hope I do. Um, started kicking the footy as a young fella, and now it's um, most things I ever do. I run by him first. He is the, has the, the words of wisdom. Um, but I'd hope to have a, a similar relationship that I have with my father. Is there anyone that intimidates you? Uh, I don't think there is. I can't imagine there would I, be. I don't really get, uh, I don't really get embarrassed. No. I try and make my uncomfort zone as big as, <laughs> as small as it possibly can, and the comfort zone being as big as it possibly can. Um, but I, I don't take anything too seriously. I think that's a, a, a key to enjoying life. Yes. And, um, what about? Would you get starstruck by anyone? I went to see David Attenborough uh, at the start of the year and sitting in the crowd listening to him speak and talk about his life and um, how he started to, to how he's gotten to where he is now, it was unbelievable. That was the first time. Because growing up as a kid, I fell in love with the environment, not only by going out and doing it, but by watching his documentary. Yes, you are and nature boy, aren't you? Love it, love yes. it. And um, I was like, this is just incredible. That incredible voice is in front of us. Yes. He's telling stories. Can you take him off as well? Uh, no. Come no, on. No one can take off that. 
Only, unfortunately, the only thing that uh, you can sort of do when it comes to taking off David Attenborough, it's, it's stuck in my memory, is a male penetrates a female. <laughs> I'm talking about a wildebeest or something like that. <laughs> but that's it, it's in my memory. It's, it's from when you're about eight years old. Yeah. Like, I, probably didn't under, I probably didn't understand what it meant at the time. <laughs> it's stuck enough for you to know, though. That was, there's something not quite right about that. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe it's what they were showing on telly at the same time. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. Now, um, you've talked about fishing a lot. It's your passion. I've got to say, I'm... You know, if I want to unwind, it's probably a skill that I should learn. It is. How do you I'm, feel about... I'm a little bit concerned that you're wearing jeans, but I think we can we can find a way around that. So, we'll give are you it a, a good crack. teacher? Um, are you patient? I'm patient, so I think we can make it work. Am I going to get wet? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Let's do it. All right.